All right, good morning everybody. Welcome to Math Lesson 73. Our ongoing quest for knowledge on decimals continues. Today we're talking about adding and subtracting decimal numbers. So let's see what we have in front of us now. So there's basically only two steps to remember. Number one, and this is the most important, line the numbers up at the decimal point when you add and subtract. You don't line them up on the right. If you're going to try to subtract 3 and 4 tenths minus 2 and 24 hundredths, you don't want them lined up on the right like this. You would take your decimal point and get them lined up like that so that the decimal points are nice, neat, and straight. Step number two, fill in any empty places with zeros. So I have an empty place right here in the hundredths. So I would just go in right in a zero, just like I did over there. Okay, once you do those two steps, you would be ready to add or subtract just like we always do. So let's take a look here. Here I'm adding 9 and 62 hundredths plus 12 and 62 hundredths plus 3 and 7 tenths. I have my decimal points lined up nice, neat, and straight. So I'm just going to bring my decimal points straight down in the answer. I'm going to go and fill in any empty places with zeros because nothing is the same as zero. Let's start getting it ready to add 2 plus 2 plus 0. Hey, that's going to give us 4. 6 plus 6 is 12 plus 7 more gives us 19, right? So I'm going to write down my 9. I'm going to carry my 1 just like I always do. 1 plus 9 is 10 plus 2 is 12 plus three more gives us 15. I'm going to write down my five. I'm going to carry my one. One plus one is two, giving a final answer of 25 and 94 hundredths. Not too tough as long as you remember to line them up at the decimal point. Let's try this one. Four tenths minus 23 hundredths. I got them lined up nice, neat, and straight at the decimal point, so I'll bring a decimal point straight down in the answer, and I'm going to fill in my empty places with zeros. So now I'm going to go 0 minus 3. I can't do it. I'm looking to borrow. Cross out that 4, bring 1 over. Now I can subtract 10 minus 3. Yeah, that's going to give us 7, right? 3 minus 2, that gives us 1. And 0 minus 0 is 0. Remember, when we have a decimal number without anything for a whole number in the ones place, we still want to write in that 0. Okay, so the answer is 17 hundredths. Let's try just one more, and I don't care if the book does write them horizontally. We're always going to set ours up vertically, lining them up at the decimal point. So I have 6 and 1 tenth, and I'm going to attempt to subtract 4 and 87 hundredths, right? Even if the book writes them horizontally, this is the only way to do it, lining them up nice, neat, and straight at the decimal point. Put in a zero in any missing spots and bring your decimal point straight down. So, zero minus seven, can't do it. Turns into a borrowing situation. I'm going to go and bring one over here. Ten minus seven. That gives us 3. 0 minus 8, another borrowing situation. So I'm going to borrow 1 from the 6. He pays 1, turning this 0 into 10. Now I can go 10 minus 8, and that gives us 2. And lastly, I have 5 minus 4. That's 1, giving us an answer of 1 and 
23 hundredths, if you remember the name of the spot. So something a little bit different, but applying the same skills. Here they're asking us to estimate the perimeter of the square. So we know it's a square, so all four sides would be the same. Right now its exact length is 3 and 3 tenths, but they want us to estimate. So that sounds like each side then would be 3. I'd have 3 estimated on that side and on that side and on that side. So the estimated perimeter, the distance all the way around, would be 12 centimeters. 3 centimeters times 4, or 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, would give us 12 centimeters. Now they want us to find the perimeter, not the estimate, the actual perimeter, right? So just like we did in the rest of the lesson, it's just going to be an adding problem where I'm going to go and have to add all the numbers of the four sides. So 3 and 3 tenths, I'm going to have to add four times making sure I line up my decimal points all four places, right? So 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 sounds like 12 to me. I'm going to write down my 2. I'm going to carry my 1. And again, it's 12 plus 1 more is 13. Make sure you bring your decimal point straight down into the answer. The estimated perimeter would be 12. The exact perimeter would be 13 and 2 tenths of a centimeter, right? A little bit of a difference between the estimated answer and the exact answer. Let's try this one. The distance from Will's house to school is 8 tenths of a mile. Here's Will's house going to school. He's going to travel eight tenths of a mile. So the first part of the question says, how far does Will travel going to school and back again? So eight tenths of a mile going to school and another eight tenths of a mile when he comes home. So I'm going to have to go and add these two numbers up, right? 8 tenths plus 8 tenths. So I'm going to start over here in my tenth spot. 8 plus 8 is 16. Write down my 6. Carry my 1. 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. And don't forget to bring down your decimal point. So how far does he travel going to school and back again? 1 and six tenths of a mile. Not too bad so far, right? Now it's going to say, how far does he travel over five days? So technically, we haven't gotten to the point where they show us how to multiply decimal numbers. It's coming soon. But right now, the only way to attack this problem would be to go and add these distances five times. He goes one and six tenths on day one, and another one and six tenths on day two, and another one and six tenths on day three, and another one and six tenths of a mile on day four, and finally he goes another one and six tenths of a mile. So, 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6, otherwise known as 6 times 5, that's going to be 30. So I'll write down my 0. I'm going to carry my 3. 3 plus 1 is 4, plus another one is 5, plus another one is 6, 7, and 8. Make sure you write in your decimal point. So 8 and 0 tenths. And remember, if you have 0 tenths, do you really have to say it? No, nothing is the same as zero tenths. So this would just be eight miles is what he travels 
to and from school over the course of five days. All right, that is the end. Not a whole lot to this lesson. The big thing is to remember, line up the numbers at the decimal point. You're going to want some scratch paper. Good luck on the Socrative quiz.